what's good guys today we're gonna be doing ufc fight night prediction video tybor versus spivak to the rematch tybor won the first match i just want to mention that this fight is canceled guys chris gutierrez versus javid basra is canceled guys so i'm gonna be skipping the coal main i believe it's the coal main for this fight and it's already canceled so it's no longer here so without further ado guys let's go into the entire card very good card danny barlow charlampas Gogorio, Yana Santos, Chepi Mariscal. Let's go, guys. Stephanie Luciano versus Talita Alencar. Talita Alencar is a plus 140 dog. Stephanie's a minus 170. When we look at this fight, guys, 5 1 and 1. She comes from the Dana White's Contender Series. She had a draw on Dana White Contender Series. Prior to that, she won her fight against Karina and beat Aline Oliveira. So Stephanie is very good. She's coming into the pinnacle of her career she's making her ufc debut this saturday on the other hand talita it already made her ufc debut she fought on dana white contender series they fought already okay so they fought already on dana white contender series and they're gonna fight again it was a draw <laughs> and now talita already made her ufc debut successful debut so now they're gonna fight again but uh this wants to settle it so this wants to settle for all the marbles 24 years old to 33 strawway division 5 6 and 5 1 66 and 3 to 58 Majority Tapology has a line card to win by decision. I'm going to be going Stephanie Luciano just because I think that her striking's better. I know in Dana White Contender Series in the fight, it went to the draw and it didn't look that good for Stephanie. But I'm going to go Stephanie Luciano to win this fight and uh, to win this fight by majority decision, guys. You guys know that the first fucking fight, 90% of the time, goes the distance. So give me Stephanie Luciano to win this fight 29-28 by unanimous decision. And uh, Majority Tapology has a line card to win. So if you guys like the dog, jump on a line card. Up the card, guys. Jarno Ahrens versus Yusuf Zalal. When we look at this fight, Yusuf Zalal is a major prospect, bro. He's a minus 350. Jarno Ahrens, on the other hand, is plus 260 from the Netherlands. Zalal, Morocco, 14-5-1 for Zalal. His last five, he had a draw against Damar Blackshear. And uh, Jarno Ahrens has lost to Song Hu Choi, William Gomez, and um, in another promotion, he's lost as well. 29 years old, 27 for Yusuf Zalal. Featherweight division, 5'11 to 5'10, 73 and 75. I'm going to be taking Yusuf Zalal in this fight. He's a heavy favorite, bro. Majority Topology has uh, him to win by decision, but if he's going to win by finish, it's most likely submission. That's his game. In my opinion, I think Yusuf Zalal is due for a finish. I know his last fights, guys, usually go to decision. He, uh, he submitted Billy Cortino. He has very good submissions, arm triangle, finish, finish in all of his... Other than against the Mont Black, she went to decision. If you look more into his career, he's went to decision again. But I'm going to take Yusuf Zalal by submission. I think he could submit Jarno Ahrens in the second round. And if it's not the second round, it's the third round. Give me uh, Yusuf Zalal to win this fight by majority decision. If not by majority decision, by submission in the second or third round. Let's go. Up the card, guys. If I'm going a little faster, it's just because I got things to do, guys. Carl Williams versus Jonathan Denise. Jonathan Denise... Made a successful UFC debut against Austin Lane after getting controlled for at least five and a half minutes and losing the first round. And then the first time he ever went into the second round, he lost against Austin. Well, he knocked out Austin Lane after getting completely controlled in the first round. Carl Williams, expert in controlling people on the ground. Justin Toffey he controlled him for decision. Chase Sherman, decision. Decision Merchant, Lucas Brzezinski. Who can't finish Lucas Brzezinski? Even Mick Park can finish that guy. Um, Jimmy Lawson and then... Uh, his only KO is prior to the UFC. Minus 225 for Carl Williams, obviously, because uh, we saw Jonathan Denise get Russell fucked against Austin Lane, and Austin Lane is not really that good at wrestling. 34 years old to Carl Williams, 33 years old for Jonathan Denise, 245 to 246 for Carl Williams. He's going to be lighter by 10 pounds. 255 for Jonathan Denise. He cuts weight to make heavyweight, 79 to 79 inch reach. Um, Jonathan Denise is going to win. If he wins, he's going to win by KO. No if and buts about it. 91% of topology has him to win by KO. And the majority of topology has Carl Williams to win this by decision. <clears throat> I think it's going to be a grimy decision. A grimy, dirty, boring decision. I want Jonathan Denise to win. I might pick Flip. I saw MMA experts pick Jonathan Denise. And I really like that pick, bro. I like him as a dog, bro. Because if he's going to win, he's going to win by knockout. But um, I'm going to take Carl Williams, guys, just to win by majority decision. 30-27, 29-28, and 29-28, uh, just because I think Jonathan Denise is due for a loss, man. He's undefeated for now, but uh, if he doesn't, if he wins this fight, eventually he's going to lose. But uh, that's not a good mindset to have for a fighter because they can always get better in their takedown defense. 
So we have to see where he's at. His last fight, though, was not that long ago. It was three months ago. So they're really fast-tracking him. They put him against Carl Williams to see where he's really at. And this is one of his first real tests. And I got Carl Williams to win this fight by 29-28. Unanimous decision. Up the card, guys. Carl, Carl Rosa versus Penny Kenzat. Carl Rosa had an amazing fight, guys, with uh, Irene Aldana, fight of the night. Went to decision, one of the best woman MMA fights I've ever seen. Penny Kenzat. Lost to Caitlin Vera, and then she lost to Macy Chasson by submission. Honestly, <laughs> Macy Chasson is really good. She just beat Mara Bruno Silva. But um, that loss didn't really look that good for her. 16-8 and 0 for Penny Kanza. Penny is uh, the plus 150 underdog. Minus 175 for Carol Rosa. 29 years old. She's younger, Carol. 32 years old for Penny. Bantamweight division. <clears throat> I'm not... Um, okay, I believe they come from featherweight, though. 5'5 five, five to 5'7, five, 67 inch reach to 66. Carol Rosa has had that amazing fight against Arena Aldana. Her wins are very good against Yana Santos, who's also fighting in this card. Norma Dumont, she lost, but no shame in that. Who doesn't lose to Norma Dumont, bro? Chelsea Chandler also lost to Norma Dumont. A lot of people are losing to Norma Dumont in this division. Majority Topology has Carol Rosa to win by decision. This fight's definitely going the distance. It's definitely going over 2.5. I'm going to take Carol Rosa to win this fight by uh, third round. Third round finish third round ko or majority decision because uh i feel like she should be able to finish a girl like penny penny's you know she went to decision against raquel pennington caitlin vera but she can get finished she has been finished before macy chasson i think carol rosa if she really puts it on her she can finish her but this fight's most likely going the distance because women mma has no power so give me carol rosa to win this fight by 29 28 majority decision guys let's get it a lot of women fights on this fucking card right Danny Barlow versus Nikola Veretinikov. Veretinikov. Nikolai. I'll just call him. Danny Barlow versus Nikolai. A O and O for Danny Barlow. Undefeated prospect. Coming from Dana White Contender Series. Successful Dana White Contender Series. Raheem Forrest KO. And then Josh Quinlan KO. Very good win in my in my opinion. Nikolai is making his UFC debut against an undefeated prospect. Minus 280 for Danny Barlow. Rightfully so. Plus 230 for the moderate underdog. 29 years old to 34, 170, 170, 62, I mean 6'2 to 6'1, 79 and 3 to 74. Majority Tapology has Danny Barlow to win by KO. I'm going to be taking Danny Barlow to win by KO as well, but I'm going to be taking Danny Barlow to win by KO in the second or third round. I don't think it's going to be in the first. I know a lot of people are banking on it being a first round KO, but I think it can go to the distance. And if it's not going distance, it's probably going to be a third round KO because Danny. Danny Barlow has one of the sickest nicknames, first of all. Left hand to God, man. Left hand to God. I love that nickname, bro. That nickname is one of the best nicknames I've ever seen, bro. Nikolai making his USA debut. Uh, it's a very tough debut to make against a guy who's undefeated. And uh, if you're choosing Nikolai, bro, he has to win by finish, in my opinion. He cannot win this fight by the distance. He doesn't have... He doesn't have... Um, like, he has submissions on his record, but... He doesn't have anything extraordinary that makes me think he's going to beat Danny Barlow. Danny Barlow, Chris Boxing, very good striker. And uh, his Dana White Contender Series really impressed me, bro. His KO on Dana White Contender Series. Josh Quinlan as well, guys. Give me Danny Barlow to win this fight by third round KO. Third round because I think uh, Nikolai is going to be a lot tougher than we expect. We see a lot with these guys who make their debut. They have a lot of success, and they end up doing very good, and they do up a lot better than we expect. And at a minus 280, um, for a guy who's fairly new to the UFC... Uh, minus 300, I don't really think that that should be, but it's because he's undefeated in his uh, last two wins, that's why. So give me Danny Barlow to win that fight. Up the card, guys, we got Charalampis Grigorio. I can't believe we lost to Chris, Chris Gutierrez fight, bro. Tashiomi Kazama versus Charalampas Grigorio. Charalampas just lost his last fight to Chad Allen Hurt. No shame in that, bro. He got rustled. I, I believe he got rustled in that fight. Uh, just let me make sure, guys. Just let me make sure if he got wrestled in that fight. Chad Ellinger. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Yeah, Chad Ellinger is good, though. No shame in that. No shame in losing to Chad Ellinger. His opponent, Tashomi Kazama, is... Okay, so he had struggle against Garrett Armfield on getting him down. He couldn't. He wasn't able to get Garrett Armfield down, which was almost a year ago. Very inactive for this guy. But um, I thought he was going to be able to take Garrett Armfield down, and he wasn't able to take Garrett Armfield down at all in that fight. 10-4-0 for Tashomi. 
eight four and all for Charles Gregorio. He this guy comes from Long Island, bro. So we gotta rep that strong, bro. You know that's where I'm from. So we gotta rep that shit strong. Minus one eighty five for Charles Lampis, plus one fifty five for Tashomi. Japan versus she put us 32 years old to 27. Bantamweight division, 5'7 five, seven to 5'7, five, seven, 67 to 69 inch reach. Tashomi's going to try to wrestle, guys. And he didn't have that much success wrestling against Garrett Anfield. But um, when he does have success, he looks pretty good. In my opinion, though, I think Charlumpus is way better, not only in the crisper boxing, but at winning decisions, bro. He's better at fighting 15 minutes. He's, he's fairly new to the UFC, though. He comes from Dana White Contender Series, and he lost his UFC debut. So we could have a little factor where... A guy who wins on the Dana White Contender Series loses their debut and then they lose another fight. This could happen with Charlampas, but Chad Ellinger is a very good loss and it's not no shame to lose to him. And this was four months ago. I think he's going to be more active. He's not going to have ring rust and he's going to be way better than Tashomi. And I think he's better than Tashomi even if this fight were to happen tomorrow. I think he whoops Tashomi's ass tomorrow. And I'm going to be taking Charlampas Gregorio. Let's go Long Island strong. Let's go Charlampas Gregorio to win this fight. By, uh, I'm going to go by KO. I'm going to go by third round KO. Just because... Sorry, guys. I'm going by third round KO just because... Tashomi has been finished before by KO. Garrett Arnfield knocked him out. Uh, Rina Nakamura knocked him out. And that was a very, very fucking... That, no shame in losing to Rina. Because he's a prospect in, this, in the UFC. But um, getting KO'd, your chin got cracked. And then flying knees got KO'd. So I'm going to go Charlampas Gregorio by third round KO. If it's not third, then it's second. Let's go Charlampas... Let's go Long Island. Let's go. Up the card. Main card. Main card only has four fights. Let's get a new fight added to this main card. Guys, comment down below if you want a new fight added to this main card. Alan Nascimento versus Jafiel Filo. 16-3 and 0 for Jafiel Filo. Alan Nascimento, 26. 20 wins, 6 losses, and 0, zero draws. His most recent losses to Tiger Olambekov. Nascimento, it was a split decision. He could have arguably won that, but I think Tagir Olimbekov won that. And then he lost to Harleen Pavia. Um, in my opinion, I don't really like that Pavia loss. Bro, that's the guy who got knocked out by... Uh, okay, I mean, it was his Dana White Contender Series, though. It was, and that was five years ago, so... He's way better than he was last five years ago. Jafel Filo, his last loss was to Mohamed Mokayev. Submission rear naked choke. He was the one who got a really good submission on or like a really good submission attempt on Muhammad Mokayev with the leg he tried to get like a leg lock or like a heel hook and like pull it really high up but he wasn't able to get it he ended up looking back at Mokayev and Mokayev was fine so his submission attempt didn't really mean anything minus 210 for Alan Nascimento BJJ specialist Jafel Filos plus 175 Rio de Janeiro Brazil versus uh, Sao Paulo Brazil 32 years old to 31 flyweight division 5'8 to 5'7 69 inch region 68 in flyweight I think you got to be tall bro I think you got to be a state Steven Ursig Mohamed Mokayev um, like uh, Pantoja I don't think you could really get away with being I mean other than your other uh, unless you're mighty mouse but Alan Nascimento has a very good build for 125 Jafel Filo, his last two wins to Daniel Barr's submission and uh, Ode Osborne's submission are very good. But Ode Osborne is nowhere near the pinnacle that I thought he would be, bro. Like, Ode Osborne, I thought he was going to be a prospect in the UFC, a future title contender. And after he got knocked out by Manel Cap, bro, he ended up not being shit. So, um, when we look at majority of typology, you know that this fight is going the distance, guys. I have that this fight goes over 2.5 rounds. And I'm going to take Ali Nascimento to win this fight just because... I think Jafel Filo, without his submissions, and if we don't take this fight to the ground, he's going to be in for a rude awakening, guys. And, ja and a guy like Alan Asamento has learned from his losses. He beat Jake Hadley, who Jake Hadley just beat Colin Lochran, and that is a very good win in my opinion. I didn't think this win was that good at the time, but after seeing into this win, this win against Jake Hadley is very, very good, considering Jake Hadley has now moved up and had success in Bantamweight. Carlos Hernandez... That's a good win, but Carlos Hernandez is uh, mediocre in the flyweight division. He's never going to get the belt, but he's a very good. He's a very good. Uh, con I don't even consider him a contender. He's a very good uh, ranked opponent, in my opinion. I think Carlos Hernandez gives Jafel Filo a really good run. Give me Alan Nascimento to win this fight by majority decision, 29-28, 29-28, and probably 29-28 on all judge scorecards. If you have Filo, bro, go Filo by submission, bro. No shame in that. Filo has submitted most of his opponents, but I think that you have to be really bad in order to get submitted by Jafel Filo. If you're really good and you know you know BJJ and you know how to defend a lot of chokes and the average BJJ, 
you should be able to defend yourself and hold your own when you get to the ground against Jafiel Filo. Unless you're Ode Osborne. Next fight, guys. Let's go. Yana Santos versus Chelsea Chandler. Why is this on the main card? Why? Why, bro? Why is this on the main card, bro? This is one of the worst fights I've ever seen, guys. Yana Santos lost all three of her last fights, guys. She lost to Carl Rosa. She lost to Holly Holm. And then she lost to Irene Aldana. Chelsea Chandler lost to Norma Dumont. She was running away from Chelsea. Chelsea Chandler was running away from Norma Dumont, bro. She's a little... She's a little she actually got hurt. Uh, Norma Dumont had her running. Running across the cage. Minus 125 for Yana Santos. How are you a favorite after you lost three times in a row? You're trash. How? Plus 105 for Chelsea Chandler. 33 years old to 34 years old for Yana Santos. Guys, I think we should have had another woman MMA fight on the main card. I don't think we should have had this one. This one's going to the distance. It's going to be boring as fuck, bro. 34 years old to 33. 144 to 137. They're both moving down. Chelsea Chandler missed weight against Jose and Nunes. She was a moderate underdog against Jose and Nunes. She missed weight, and then she won her fight against Jose and Nunes and grappled her and beat her. I lost money that fight, guys, because I bet on Jose and Nunes. I can't. I'm done. I'm done betting on women's MMA, guys. I keep on fucking losing money. Betting on fucking betting against Chelsea Chandler. Betting on Chelsea Chandler. Like, with these fucking women, like, I don't fucking know. Chelsea Chandler, man. Like, 6-2-0. and oh, What the fuck? So, one, they're both going down to 135. I don't know if they're going to make weight. I don't know if Chelsea Chandler's going to make weight. Who cares? If she misses weight, she wins the fight anyway. 5-8 of 5-8. 68 and Teresa 68. <laughs> majority typology has this fight to go to distance, guys. If you have somebody win, it's by majority decision. Some people are going KO by Chelsea Chandler. When has Chelsea Chandler ever fucking KO'd anybody? She KO'd Juliana Storyanko. Like, come on, bro. Come on. I know it's possible. Anything's possible in MMA. But, bro. Give me Chelsea Chandler to win this fight. Give me the underdog to Russell Fakiana Santos, 30-27, 29-28, and 30-27. If Jose Nunes wasn't able to do it four months ago, and that was her only chance to do it, Yana Santos is not going to fucking do it. And she should not be a favorite. Give me Chelsea Chandler to win this fight at a plus 105 by majority decision, 29-28, 30-27, and 29-28 on all judges' scorecards. Let's go Chelsea Chandler. Majority Topology is really smart. They see that she's a favorite, Yana Santos, and they go with Chelsea Chandler because Chelsea Chandler is the better fighter on paper. But women's MMA, she could lose this shit after beating Jose Nunes. All right. Co-main. The new co-main, Chepe Mariscal, in my opinion. Okay, against Damon Jackson. Damon Jackson got knocked the fuck out by Ilya Taporia, bro. Bad. He just loves to get knocked out. He's always on everybody's highlight reel. Chepe Mariscal... Lost his last fight against Morgan Sherrier. I don't give a fuck, bro. He lost that fight against Morgan Sherrier. And in my opinion, um, I don't know what the judges were on, bro. I don't know how he won that fight. I know it was really close. It was really close against Morgan Sherrier. But Morgan Sherrier was way better than him, bro. We got to run that shit back. We got to run that shit back for Morgan Sherrier, bro. Because Shep and Mariska, I don't even know if you won that fight, bro. It was very close, though. Very close. I got to watch it again. Let me know what you guys think on that one. Because uh, in my opinion, I think he should be 16-7-0, in my opinion. I don't really like how the judges sell that fight and they sell your purse like that when it's that close. Might as well give it a draw because there's no way he won that. Or I don't know. Minus 245 for Chepa Mariscal, plus 200 for Damon Jackson. It should be a plus 300 for Damon Jackson. Bro, you could blow him a kiss and he'll get knocked out. 31 years old for Chepa Mariscal, 36 years old for Damon Jackson. 145 to 146, 57 to 511, 69 entries to 71. Chepe Mariscal, majority of people have him to win by decision. Chepe Mariscal has won against KO, against Jack Janskins, Trevor Peak, Guillermo Fida, and then uh, Jordan Beltran, bro. I don't know, man. <sighs> bro, it's because Chepe Mariscal is way better, bro. Like, on paper, he's way better than Damon Jackson. Damon Jackson just loves to get knocked out. He's also 36 years old in a very, very light division. In the featherweight division, and that's not really that good in the featherweight division. If you're going Damon Jackson to win, you're going to for him to win by decision. I and I know a majority of people have to win by submission rather than a KO, but if you're going Damon Jackson, bro, it's majority by decision, guys. I'm gonna go Chepin Mariscal, guys, to win this fight by majority decision. I think he could KO Damon Jackson, though. If he can't KO Damon Jackson, bro, then Damon Jackson is really good and he's been like training his chin. But he should be able to finish Jamin Jackson. Damon Jackson. I'm going to go Chepin Mariscal to win by KO in the second round. 
I'm going specifically second round because Chepin Mariscal takes a little bit to acclimate. He takes a little bit of time to get into the mode against his last fight against Morgan Sherrier. That was an awesome fight, bro. That fight against Morgan Sherrier was fucking lit. But um, in my opinion, he won the last, the later rounds. The third round, he definitely probably won that. I guess you could give it to him. So Chepin Mariscal is very good at winning the later half of the fight. So give me Chepin Mariscal to win this fight by 29-28. If not 29-28, second round KO. Let's go. Chepin Mariscal, second round KO, official prediction. Main event time, guys. Marcin Tybora versus Sergey Spivak. Marcin Tybora, 25-8-0. Marcin Tybora in the rematch. This is a rematch. Marcin Tybora beat Sergey Spivak by 29-28 or 30-27. Majority decision. 15 minutes, he fought hard. He actually was able to take down Sergey Spivak and uh, control him and just beat him. So I'm surprised that Sergey Spivak is the favorite. Considering Marcin Tybor just beat Taito Avasa as well. He's coming into his own. And sometimes the pinnacle of your career or your prime of your career is uh, the later half when you're in the heavier divisions. So 38 years old for Marcin Tybora, 29 years old for Sergey Spivak. 256, Sergey Spivak is a little bit heavier. Marcin Tybor is 247. He's faster. 6'3 to 6'3, 78 inch reach to 78. Tybora, majority of topology has Tybora win by decision. If you're going Spivak... Majority of topology that are choosing Spivak are choosing him to win by KO. In my opinion, I think somebody's going to get finished this fight. Um, I wouldn't be surprised if it goes all five. The last fight went all 15, and they fought very slow. Marcin Tybori does this thing where he fights so slow, and like he just waits. And like the fighter that he's fighting gets so bored that he forgets that he's fighting. So I'm going to go, um, I'm gonna go uh, Sergey Spivak. I'm going to go Sergey Spivak, guys, to win this fight, guys. By, uh, I'm going to go by... I'm going to go for him to finish this fight, guys. Sorry, guys. I'm rushing this fucking... Uh, I'm rushing this prediction video, guys. But I'm going to go Sergey Spivak to win this fight by submission or KO inside the distance, guys. In my opinion, though, I don't think he's going to be able to finish him. If he is, it's because he's able to take him down and he can get a submission. He's very good at his submission game. In my opinion, his submission game is way better than his KO game. His last loss was to Surreal Gone by KO. Really brutal finish. This guy lost to Tom Aspinall, Marcin Tybora. So I'm going to go Sergey Spivak to win this fight, guys, by majority decision. If not majority decision, I'm going double chance, guys. I'm sorry. By decision or submission, guys, more likely submission. And I'm going to go fourth round submission for Sergey Spivak just because... Uh, I know Marcin Tybor won the first fight, and he should be the favorite, but I think Sergey Spivak is better than Marcin Tybor. I just feel like he had an off night in that fight, and he should be able to beat Marcin Tybor, but Marcin Tybor is that parlay buster, and he could definitely win that fight, guys. So I'm going to go Sergey Spivak to win this fight, guys. 48-47, 48-47, and maybe 49-46, but I'm going Sergey Spivak. If it's not by majority decision, guys, it's by submission. Give me Sergey Spivak to win this fight by submission, fourth round, guys. I'm throwing a lot. I'm throwing a lot of Hail Mary. I think the over 4.5 can hit, but um, I'm going to take the double chance on FanDuel. Sergey Spivak to win by points or submission. I think it's more likely. I know he can KO him, but at a minus 120, guys, I'll take Sergey Spivak money line. It's better than anything else, guys. Sergey Spivak to win this fight. I think he needs to get his rede redemption on Martian Tybora, so let me get Sergey Spivak, guys. If you guys like the video, guys, drop a like, comment your most anticipated fight, and let me know what you guys think, guys. I'll see you guys in the next one. Let's get it. Peace from the Middle East. Let's get it. Back to Dana's dungeon, the Apex. Sergey Spivak for the win. Let's go. Minus 120. Let's get Sergey. Sergey, get that win back. Get it back in blood. Hey!